Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Brawl Masters Arena. We're kicking things off with a very interesting matchup right here. We have a six man submission match going on, and this one is for a very interesting purpose. No, not only for, for an opportunity for one of these men to secure themselves a win, but uh, as it happens, the, this match has a, a special stipulation. You see, Eraser. Still is putting his rated R title on the line and still is demanding an opponent. However, after his him defeating Blue Brood in our last episode on Sunday, there there's actually no one left in the men's roster who is willing to face off against him. So what we decided instead to do here is uh, by a random draw, take up six people here, put them in a submission match, and whoever ends up tapping out here will be facing off against the rated R champion, the Demon King himself, in our main event tonight. So yeah, it's a very, very interesting situation and evidently so, something to watch out for. Plenty, plenty of people here definitely wanting to avoid that, but also this is also a oppor good opportunity to try to get a victory, especially in a... Uh, especially considering who we have going, we have ha half half the members here, season one veterans. There's Outlaw Casey, representing the Coopers crew, Punk Kirkley is part of the Olympia Legends, and Motorman Max. Not just that, but from season two, there's the superhero Flyboy, season three, Green Cyclo, the Wushian martial artist, and season four, the previous rated R champion, General George. Yeah, yeah, it says a lot. Yeah, remember this was a random draw. None of these people wanted <laughs> to take part in this, but hey, now that they have been drawn into it, they cannot. The only way we uh, get out of this situation is uh, making sure that you don't, you are not the one who ends up tapping out. Yeah, but it says a lot that even the previous champion, General George, does not want to go for for a rematch. I mean, he he would have a pure, a good opportunity here, but. He is hesitant. He is full on hesitant to go for the title opportunity. It's anyone's game to go to claim that rated R title, but no one wants it. No, no one actually wants to face off against the Demon King. So, at a very interesting situation here, especially considering that uh, he still needs to, or we still need an opponent for him for the season four finale. The Breakthrough premium show coming to you on Sunday, two uh, two weeks from now on Sunday. Uh, I believe it was sixth of March, if if memory serves me. Correct. That's right. Uh, March. I mean August sixth of August, of course. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Ooh, boot up, boot up there from Motorman Max against Punk Hercules. I think he's knocked out and. Motorman Max taking the opportunity, but unfortunately hits the ropes there. Punk Hercules has his leg underneath the ropes, so that will force the break there. Yeah, good, good strategy. Definitely a good strategy for the most people here, here to fight on the ring side. So there's no way that, that submission happened like here. We have a side headlock by Casey, but... Oh, Punk Hercules me while inside the ring. Starting to put, put up a comeback against Waterman Max, crashing the knee against the face. There looks up both of the legs here. Drops the double leg drop. Extreme style. Looking up here. Beautiful hold here. A Romero special, I believe this one is called. Here comes General George to break it up. I mean, it's not, a, it's not about them preventing anyone from going into the match, it's about them wanting to still earn a victory. Punk Kirkley is taking out Outlaw Casey as well. And he exits, exits the ring. Motorman Max, the only one inside. Here comes General George and Punk Kirkley is also getting back inside the ring here. Picking up the legs here. Oh, was, was gonna go for that Boston Crab, but... Unfortunately, Punk Hurtley is there to break it up even before it could start turning around. Green Cyclone jumping in and jumping out. Oh, there we have the Code Blue. Actually, can he, can he call that Code Blue considering he's not even wearing any blue? I mean, it's gold and red. Locked up here. The solid vertical suplex.
jumping bulldog there. Green Cyclone taking out Flyboy. High Flyer versus High Flyer on the ring side. Only wish these people would, fight, would be fighting inside the ring. Solid Frog Splash from Punk Hercules. Here comes Motorman. Green Cyclone with a submission hold. Again, it doesn't matter on the ring side. Even if Flyboy would tap out here, it does not matter. Yeah, the match will not conclude there. As we as we do not let's uh, let's face it, this is not about getting a winner. This is more about getting a loser in here. Who is the unfortunate one who has to go and face off against the Demon King in the main event? Pulling the leg, dropping the elbow right onto the knee. Punk Hercules ejected from the ring by the General George. Climbs to the top rope and comes to the outside with a splash. Casey with a Moonlight Drive neck breaker. And now setting up a Camel Clutch here. A very, very solid. Oh, kicks the rope. Motorman kicking the rope, causing the break there. Yeah, not very much sit well situated. Powerful choke slam from the Motorman stomping to the arm. And now single leg Camel Clutch. Far away from the ropes enough so that there's no worry about this ending in a rope break. But Green Cyclone coming. No, he's, he doesn't care. Oh, Flyboy cares, he's gonna come in and break up the hold here. Snapmare takedown. And there goes Motorman. Flyboy, uh, I mean Green Cyclone trying to single like Camel Clutch against Outlaw Casey, but gets a drop kick to the back. Flyboy, Sars, and yeah, this is an excellent duo. This Flyboy Green Cyclone duo definitely won. I couldn't have imagined actually. I wouldn't have imagined them, them to be working out so well together, but here they are coming in. The Cyclone Pile Driver. That's a heavy strike to the top of the head there, and now looking to finish this one off. Ringside, Punk Hercules dusting off General George. Basement drop kick from Motorman gets countered. Green Cyclone taking control of the situation. Nearly retaliation. Oh, and there we go, another. Code blue from the Motorman Max locking up now. Iron Claw, but yeah, clearly could see that Green Cyclos legs were, were underneath the ropes. There not, not not a chance that was gonna work out. Setting up here a backbreaker, stretching the back across. And Green Cyclone escaping to the ringside flyboy. And Outlaw Casey now going up against one another, kick to the gut there, lifting up. Powerbomb situation about to happen, slamming down hard on the ring and takes down Motorman as well. Casey with dropping the fist. Then one half of the men's wrestling alliance who will be defending his title at the breakthrough event. We will later find, on tonight find out uh, who will be advancing in the tag team tournament for, for, to uh, determine the number one contender. As we have the Hunter Bros and the Queens facing off against one another. Close line into the corner. General George going up against Punk Hercules in the center of the ring. And Casey with another camel clutch here. Beautiful hold here. Very powerful one. Trying to get Motorman to tap. Yeah, I think trying to tap, try to tap out Motorman is the one thing that's not going to happen in this match. Like, he's a full-on robot, so how, how are you going to make him tap? At what point do you strain him enough that he's going to tap out? I don't think it's programmed to do that. But I could be mistaken. Let's see. Punk Hercules now single like Camel Clutch driving in. The Green Cyclone breaks it up. Kick to the midsection. Actually a high kick to the chest there. Ducks out of the way. Locks up the head scissors. In and goes around. Beautiful takedown. Flyboy giving a slap to Motorman. Takes him down with a snapmare. Tries to get some momentum going. But unfortunately too many people are in on his way. Never mind the single like Camel Clutch and another break up there from General George. They're, de they're definitely trying. Plenty of people definitely wanting this match to end. Ensure that they, they don't come under the threat of being sent into the Rated R Championship fight tonight. German suplex tossing Flyboy across the ring. And now Green Cyclone lifted up, brought down with a uh, driver. Driving to the leg to the arm there. 
setting up another gold blue. Breaks the arm and now setting up. And way too close to the ropes there. Single leg camel clutch definitely at that point would have done the job. Unfortunately, it's too close to the ropes. It's very confining to fight in a match like this when there are multiple people populating the ring. And then you have to worry about the ropes as well. Sending out La Casey into the corner here. Ooh, boot up again. On the ringside, Punk Hercules locking up a Romero special again. Setting up. Oh, there goes the gold blue one more time. That's gonna go for a submission hold. Instead, gonna be trying to fly to the end. Chestering at Casey. I don't think there's much left of Casey to even get back up. There comes in and gets taken down. Casey with a surprise slam. Kick to the midsection. Moonlight drive. There goes Motorman Max. Stop into the arm and now trying to sit up. But he has his leg resting right on the rope. Yeah, referee immediately calling it off. Yeah, uh, the people here do not are, don't have the ring IQ for some reason. Or, or maybe they try to postpone the match as far as possible. Which makes absolutely no sense, you know. But Green Cyclone now in a perfect position. Ooh, insecurity. Reversal from him and now... Casey in a poor position, not close enough to the ropes to even try to make the break here. Single like Camel Clutch, driving the knee in, really stretching out the back. Is it enough? No, smashes the head against the canvas, does it? Does it bring it into a full submission? Green Cyclone exiting out of the ring, Punk Hercules. Meanwhile, challenging, measuring up against Outla Casey, takes him down with a running clothesline. Coming about, beautiful springboard leg drop. Something right onto the face there. Right to the mask of the masked rider, the lone cowboy. Coming in, elbow dive from the top. And now looking to put down the outlaw. Lift it up here, gonna put to sleep, we go to sleep. German suplex drops him down to the center of the ring. The perfect opportunity, the perfect location to bring this match to a conclusion. If he can just make his way. No, he picks him up for some reason. Gonna go for strikes instead. Motorman and Flyboy meanwhile inside the ring. I suppose that's why he decided not to risk. Going for a vice grip here. Knocks down Flyboy. Motorman now. Gonna bring it around one more time. I don't know what he's bringing around. But allowing Flyboy to get... Almost back up to his feet. Oh, goes for the head, but... Yeah, not a happy collision. Media face full of metal. Quite literally. Renting the arm. Take down. Leg drop right onto it. Breaking it in process. Setting up the arm again. Jumping to it. Straining it multiple times. Does I use it for... Oh, there we go. Boot up. Motorman Max... Looking to go for that code blue one more time, and here it comes. Beautiful, absolutely a beautiful neck breaker. Stops to the hand, and now single leg camel clutch, pretty sure. Yeah, too close to the ropes, or actually underneath the ropes. No, no way that was gonna happen. On the ring side here, we have a camel clutch locked in against Green Cyclone. Unfortunately for Outla Casey, fortunately for uh, Green Cyclone, if he, if he taps out. That would have that would have ended the match. Yeah, you wanna ensure you don't lose. You wanna take place in the ring. You wanna go to the ring side. But then again, then you risk getting getting yourself injured as the match gets prolonged more and more. I mean, we got we, we're talking about people here who have title matches coming up in a few weeks. This is not this is not the time to be wearing yourself out going full on. Setting up here, Snapmare takedown, Flyboy, no one inside here, goes for the spring, well not, go, goes from the ropes, that, that was it, I would have expected him to go for a, something a bit bigger than a boot to the face. Setting up here, comes in with the shooting star. So close to the ropes, though, gonna have to reposition the motorman if he's hoping to get a mission this way. Punk Hercules entering and noticing Flyboy coming after him. Exits the ring, but General George tossing him inside. He's about to take down the Punk. 
setting up against the ropes here. Lifted up. Left to hang dry onto the top rope. Did he put a hamper on his game though? Punk Curtis drops down Mortal Man. Now go after the Generals who sends him outside. Better watch out. Oh, we had a tap out outside of the ring. Out like AC tapping out to Korean Cyclone. Unfortunately, tap out happening outside of the ring. So it does not count. There's no vi winner. There's no loser right now. And again, we could make it that everyone who taps out takes part in the match. But uh, the, that that's not how the match was scheduled. So... Modern Man Max be used as a weapon, Irish Whip, as both him and General George take up a double whammy from Punk Hercules. Setting up single leg camouflage like center of the ring, this is the perfect opportunity to end this match here. Drives it in, oh, Ma Flyboy coming in to save the match up. I don't know why he could have saved himself from any further pain. Lifted up, Fire Mascari here, go to sleep. Transitions into a German suplex. Coming around here. No, doesn't does it go for the move. Is that gonna be going for a trying to grab hold? Goes for a jab. Punk Hercules is trying to set up the general and motorman sending Flyboy into the corner. Mounts the middle rope and goes for punches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, and full on ten. Picks up the superhero here. This is the perfect opportunity. Everyone is too busy on the ringside. Boot up. There it goes. There it goes. Flyboy. No, don't go for the code blue. Go for the submission right now, you stupid machine. This is your chance. You're wasting it. Why are you crossing the head against the canvas there oh there we go locking up finally the shoulder claw but i think yeah flyboy kick into the rope and with that forcing the break you fucking <laughs> i'm sorry i i i know so i should be neutral but it's just infuriating to see this kind of behavior there we go once again with the coat blue by motorman max and now we have the shoulder claw target that's locked in nowhere near the ropes and flyboy in a poor position ends up Trying to get up with something going here. Punk Hercules is rushing in and out. Does not do anything. What? He he doesn't tap out. What 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 is this flyboy made out of? Punk Hercules is taking down Motorman Max. They goes to the ringside himself. Yeah, I suppose all of these men actually want the flyboy just with Oh gets Punk Hercules gets dragged outside. Yeah, none of these men. And what is going on with General George? I just noticed that he's leaning up against the security barrier. What is going on with him? He's trying to... Is there, are the audience members holding him hostage? I mean, yeah, that's... There are no disqualifications. There are no, uh, nothing to that. But I think... Yeah, I think he's actually being held hostage here. There was a tap out. Green Cyclone tapped to up like I suppose the situation between the two is one to one now. Flyboy just taking full on advantage. General George now in the audience. Oh, Flyboy pulls him back out. Back in, back into the arena. Yeah, he was trying to... He was trying to get out of this matchup by escaping into the audience. But Flyboy 2-2 two, two was able to find, find him out. Double team action. Green Cyclone in the middle. Outlaw Casey and Motorman Max uh, uh, double teaming. The Wush and Martial Art is sending him into the corner. Straight against the Motorman. Motorman in the corner now turned around by Frank Hercules. Elbow to the back. And here we go. Fast press. Head scissors takedown from, Live, uh, from Green Cyclone. I mean, he flies, so it's easy to call him Flyboy, you know. But no, the Flyboy is on the ringside now against General George. Green Cyclone measuring up, goes for a kick against Motorman, trying to get him down. That's a whole lot of man to take down. Drops him down with a DDT though, picks up Punk Hercules now. These two have previously fought in the third season for the Junior Fighting Championship title. Plenty of, uh, somewhat history and plenty of respect as Green Cyclone lining up. A Cyclone pile driver makes it a successful connection. Pretty sure that's a full-on knockout now. All that's remaining is to make him tap. 
stomps on the arm and setting up the single like Kamuklats. Nowhere near ropes here. The match could end right here and now. If he's able to pull a bit more pressure with that just like that. Ah, taking way too long on that one. Yeah, I don't think... Does anyone even have the strength remaining to pull off a submission hold anymore, you know? They have been very... I, I would imagine everyone in the rings is so far very exhausted. We've been going for around 20 minutes now in our opening match up here. So, you know, that says a lot. That says definitely says a lot. Green Cyclone take down. Heel who locked, heel hook locked in by Flyboy against General George. Trying to get the submission that way. Does not end up working out. Look at this. Lifted up. Casey, quick thinking, saves him. At least from Motorman, but not from Punk Hercules. Oh, but Punk Hercules is he's saved from Punk Hercules by Motorman Max. Who's now trying to pick up a fight with everyone in the rings and gets taken down with a waist lock from behind. Flyboy and Green cycling up against one another. Oh, gets slammed down to the center of the ring. Going for punches. Yeah, body is just lying across the ring here. It's anyone's game if they're willing to take it. Fest press. Motorman taking down out like Casey. Flyboy trying to get a kick attack going against Punk Hercules. Unable to reach that far. Gets caught in the middle of the action here as we have a full on brawl again between these four men. Motorman being caught in the middle of it. In the eye of the storm, well, I suppose eye of the storm is not accurate as that it would be the safest place. Headlock locked in here, not enough to make Punk Hercules tap out. Here comes Green Cyclone, head scissors now locked in, takes down General George. Flyboy crushing the head of Motorman. Yeah, it's been a while since anyone went for a submission order, we had head scissors. Speak of the devil up like Casey, trying to try to get head scissors again, rope break again. Green Cyclone missing the kick. Out like Casey coming around, picks him up. Oh, what a powerful atomic drop right there. A motorman now with the shoulder claw locked in again. There's the ropes. Moonlight drive by out like Casey gets a backbreaker from General George. Motorman Max takes him down with a code blue. Green Cyclone is down and out. Not in a position though, way too close to the rope. Set up another code blue. I'm pretty sure that's a neck injury already happening. I mean, very crueling. And now Loki up the shoulder claw. Locked up, rope break. Punk Hercules coming to push, push the duo against the ropes and forcing the separation here. Gets to pay for that. Another Moolai. Oh man. Yeah, Green Cyclo. I believe it. that's a full on uh, broken neck right there. I mean, getting two gold blues and then a Moonlight drive to, uh, to follow those up. I, I, I'd, be I'd be surprised if, if there's anything left locking up. Oh, referee gets a hit there. Trying to lock up the camel clutch, but Motorman hitting both Casey and referee. Another gold blue. Yeah, absolutely relentless. Absolutely. Yeah, there, we have an actual living war machine. Well, I don't know about living, but an actual war machine in the ring right now. Lifting up. Oh, gets countered. Here comes Flyboy catching. Hold of the motorman, elbow to the back, setting him up against the ropes here. Trying to set up here, what is he, come and go. Ooh, beautiful spin kick. Gets a hold of the outlaw Casey and goes for the helicopter spin. After the wrestling takedown. But currently is taken down by General George. Who's now rising to the top, uh, or uh, at least to the middle rope to get some adoration from the fans. From the same fans who were trying to keep him trapped and tried to track him into the audience I don't know what they what those two had had against General George but hey it, it, it happened so there's that flyboy sent outside not really flying outside but hey crashing down all the same green cyclone stops to the arm of outlaw Casey here tries to go for a finishing uh, maneuver but unable to connect with it chest press though General George up against Punk Hercules. Here comes Casey. Double axe handle to the head of Green Cyclone. Crushing the arm. Beautiful neck breaker there from Punk Hercules. General George in the center of the ring. Escapes. Making his escape. Preventing a submission coming his way. German suplex from Green Cyclone. Comes behind off. Oh, beautiful Frankensteiner. 
There goes out like AC to the outside. Now it's all up to Green Cyclone. Snapmare tops the drops the elbow to the top of the head there. He's gonna escape. What is Green Cyclone doing? He just jump outside for no reason other than to injure himself. Well Flyboy and Motorman now inside the ring. Beautiful Spanish fly in the center of the ring here. Green Cyclone comes back inside from around. Flyboy climbing to the top, waiting for the opportunity to strike. No! Cyclone pile driver. Motorman Max gets taken down. There goes Green Cyclone as well. Flyboy now the only man standing in the ring. Yeah, 20, 25 minutes into the match and none of these men still show any show. Uh, any show of wanting to give up. None of them. I mean, that just speaks volumes of how much they want to avoid facing off against Eraser. Another code blue ringside. We have Camel Clutch locked in by Outlaw Casey. General George about to tap out. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter. Meanwhile, in the ring, let's see what's going on. We have. Well, I don't know why Motorman Max did take care of the opportunity. He had, he had Flyboy where he wanted him, but did not go for the submission. Here we have another uh, submission hold. Cobra Clutch locked in by Outlaw Casey on the ringside. Once again, doesn't matter if he taps out there. Yeah, he does tap out, end up tapping out, but unfortunately not, not, not a victory and not a conclusion to this match. Flyboy trapped the corner. Here comes Green Cyclone kick to the leg. And one more time with the Cyclone pile driver. Flyboy caught in the middle. German suplex. Motorman Max taking Green Cyclone, taking the advantage now to his side, gets countered. As the Busha Martial Artist comes around, locks up the head scissors here. Beautiful teamwork there from Flyboy and Green Cyclone, and so much for that teamwork. Going after Flyboy now, Cyclone Pile Driver. Kick and DDT taking up Motorman as well. Shooting star press, standing shooting star press at that. Stop taunting and go for the submission. There you go. Lucky up, but I believe it's a rope break. No, Motorman doesn't stretch his leg out. Could end up in a tap out right here if he has just a bit more time. No. Yeah, way too exhausted. Way too exhausted to try a power hold like a single like Camel Clutch. Gonna have to rely more on technique, but I don't know, I don't know if anyone even has the endurance to even have a solid wrestling hold technique going on anymore well motorman definitely i mean motor motorman is after all uh, he, he doesn't tire out i mean i suppose his power source tires out but that's it lifted up punk hercules into a power bomb sending him outside of the ring here and motorman slides outside meanwhile general george locks up a Submission hold. Outlaw Casey ends up tapping out. Motorman Max and Punk Hercules inside the ring. Code Blue is connecting and taking down the Punk. The Olympia legend. I, I honestly don't see. Oh, another one. Okay, yeah, that's it. Looking up here, the Solder Claw gonna be sensing it in and trying to hope. The tap out at long last, stretching it, putting in as much force as possible. No green cyclone comes to break it up. What are these men thinking? I have no idea. Knee lift to the midsection, boot up. Oh, and the referee gets taken down. Well, there's no way anyone can tap out now. Unfortunately, the referee did not stay down for too long, but still. Looking up the head here on the ringside. Once again, we have a single like Camel Clutch going. Unfortunately, does not result in a victory here. Does not result in the match ending. Flyboy missing the springboard. Here comes Motorman Max taking down Green Cyclone. Yeah, absolutely a brutality of a match. I mean, uh, yeah, once again, these men, all these men wanting to avoid that rated R title just because they don't want against... They want to avoid the... Fighting against the Demon King, that they're willing to go to this length. 
I mean, I would say at this point, fighting against the Demon King would be the easier call Th than the brutality of this match, but maybe we could see a end up right here. Green Cyclone locked in in a, a single like Camo Clutch. No, doesn't tap out. What does it... What does it take for these men to tap out? Green Cyclone still holding strong. Well, maybe Outla Casey can finish this where Motorman Max failed. He has definitely made General George tap out multiple times. Speaking of General taking down Motorman Max, ensuring that he's not going to be running interference. Taps out. Outla Casey does it. He makes Green Cyclone tap out. That means at long last, after 30 minutes of these six men fighting against one another, we finally now have not, not only a winner, but also a challenger for our main event tonight. Here is your winner, the ladies' man, Outlaw Casey. Yeah, talk about an opening match right here. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's episode of the Brawl Masters. We had, yeah. We started off with a one hell of a ma match right here. I, I assume the rest of the show is going to be a bit more tame. But nonetheless, it's going to be full on action. Right after this one, we're going to be getting a women's triple threat match. Taking part in this via three season one veterans. Magic Maggie, Tiger Taylor and Gaffy Gardner. All of them eager to go after their women's Grand Prix title. Then coming up later on in the show tonight, it's going to be... We have a women's rated R championship fight. On Teresa, who won a uh, title opportunity match last Sunday, has chosen to challenge Black Rose Julia for her rated R title, and the match is gonna be an extreme submission fight. And coming up in our main event tonight, as decided right now, it's the men's rated R championship title match. E Razor gonna be facing off against the challenger, the unfortunate and the unwilling challenger. Green Cyclone as of decided by, by our opening match here. Coming to you from Helsinki, Finland. I am your host, Kupari Parta, and this is Brawl Masters. Magic Maggie once again about to climb to the top at least according to her she's real eager to try to try to get up here try to win this match try to earn herself the title opportunity to reclaim the Grand Prix title from Amaya Grace to whom she lost in a very interesting submission match a very interesting outcome in that but now she's renewed she's uh, she has re-energized uh, herself she's ready to once again lay a full-on dominance Onto the women's division. And her opponents, first from parts unknown, the Warrior Princess, Tiger Taylor. The Warrior Princess, indeed, Tiger Taylor, carving out her own legacy here in the Pro Masters, and now going up against 
the toughest of the season one brawlers, both Magic Maggie as well as Gaffy Gardner, Tiger Taylor, looks to make, heads turn, waves crashing down, makes an impact and secure herself an advancement in this qualifying matchup. That's right, this is it a number one contender match. We are going to be having that next week as soon as we figure out uh, on on Sunday who, who who will be the other the winner of this match will be facing off the winner of the Sunday's match next first day. Um, hopefully that, that I said that in a way that makes sense. And yeah, this is part of the qualifying series, so let's see. One of the more most beloved brawlers of them all, the Psy Girl, Gaffy Gardner, who time and time again makes a surprise. Like, no matter how many times I see her fight, I'm always completely surprised by her talent, her expertise, her uh, honestly full on. Uh, like, a, I feel like there's a flip inside, a switch inside her mind. It gets, fli it gets flipped, and she turns into a completely, absolutely. A person who you do not want to meet inside the ring, she is, yeah, you can already see she's already a whole another person. Here we go, the bell has rung and this fight is on. Season three, uh, season one veteran brawlers, three of them facing up against one another for a, a potential opportunity to earn themselves the Grand Prix title. Currently helped by Amaya Grace, we have the previous champion Ma Magic Maggie facing off against Tiger Taylor and Kathy Gardner, uh, who had already Magic Maggie has started out dominating in the ring, takes down, runs with the clothesline and takes down with the side suplex drop. Tiger Taylor is down. Here comes Kathy Gardner, though. Oh, beautiful hanging kick to, uh, to the head there, keeping the arm trap. Yeah, Magic Maggie and Kathy Gardner, definitely the toughest woman of the season one, and definitely who made a very impactful part and who have we kept on. Be, being the staple of the women's division ever since. Beautiful face buster goes for the cover here. Tiger Taylor not about to let that happen. Instead gonna be breaking it up. There are no countouts in this match. No disqualifications. Extreme rules though are not allowed. So we weapons are... I mean weapons are allowed but there, there's not really a choice of them inside uh, or underneath the ring. Looks like we're gonna be getting some tag team action, never mind, Tell the, the genius is meeting the heads, or at least the geek, the geek meeting the head with the warrior. Gaffy Gardner trying to keep the momentum up, going against Magic Maggie, insecuring, striking her down and making her retreat from the ring. Must be a heavy impact and definitely no, uh, not something to be surprised of, Gaffy Gardner. Definitely a heavy striker when it comes down to it, but more of a technician, she is... Absolutely a fantastic woman. I like. I don't. I don't know where she has learned to fight the way she does. But she is at the very pinnacle of what it means to be a brawler here. Maggie giving the audience a treat here. But here comes Tiger Taylor giving her something else all to get her hair whip, tossing her across the ring here. Hair pull, mat slam. Kicking and trying to keep her down as much as possible, but here's Scaffy coming in with her own kicks to the leg and to the gut, strikes now with the elbow, He's wrenching the arm, setting up here. Ooh, what a beautiful backbreaker! Hooks up the leg and going for victory. Break up there by Magic Maggie rushing in. Tiger Taylor exiting the ring here, locking out the hip. Gaffy Gardner takes down Magic Maggie. I'm getting real excited if you cannot tell. Stomping right onto the arm and Gaffy already declaring herself number one. What a powerful statement. As she's kicking, kicking down the previous champion. Oh, she rolls through. Gets back up to her feet but gets a kick to the midsection. Keeping up with the kicks. Gaffy gets caught. Sent over the top rope and now Tiger Taylor challenging Maggie. She did not like that. Sit out face buster. Gaffy make, taking the opportunity to get back inside the ring. Oh no, that's a mistake. 
gets a kick as she was just taunting at Maggie being lifted up here in the poor position, the very poorest position available as she's turned around on top on the top turnbuckle. Fortunately, Tiger Taylor there to run interference. No, she comes around, locking up spy not a spider su suplex, a German suplex. Knee lift. Beautiful high kick. Trying to get her locked up into the corner again. Magic Maggie now DDT. And just like that, Kevin Gartner is out. And oh, it's like a it's like a magic trick. Where did she go? Magic Maggie making Kevin Gartner disappear. And looks like Tiger Taylor is about to make Mag Maggie's chances disappear. Looking up the camel clutch. No, gets taken down. SDF camel clutch. Oh, misses the close line. Maggie sending. Taylor into the corner, pretty sure she's gonna try. No, she goes after Kathy now. Sending her against Tiger Taylor and now gonna be taking them both out with this one move, Iris Whip. Kathy and Tiger Taylor both got taken out with that. What is what is Maggie doing here? What is she? Look at this. Yeah, that's just the ingenuity of Magic Maggie coming to get her. There's no brawler like her, no fighter who just is able to utilize her body as a weapon. In this caliber, now looking up, the Black Widow, uh, the, yeah, the Black Widow submission hold. I was about to say suplex, but not quite. Was gonna tap. Tiger Taylor was about to tap, but Kathy Gardner able to save the match up. But if she gets even one more submission hold like that, the Tiger Taylor on Tiger Taylor, then it's all over. Magic Maggie now from the top comes in with the splash, hooks up the leg. Trying to pin Kathy Gartner here. We have one and a kick out. Yeah, all uh, all over. All to get her in a whole another league there. Maggie now preparing to strike, taking the opportunity. But Tiger Taylor running interference. Trapping Maggie into the corner, lifting her up. Gonna line up. Snake eyeing her to the turnbuckle. Heavy strikes here as Tiger Taylor... Uh, unleashes an onslaught, but Kathy running interference gets caught by Maggie. Oh no, she's gonna do it again. Once again, weaponizing Kathy Gardner here. Um, as she and Tiger Taylor both end up taking huge amounts of damage from one another. Kathy sent to the ring or rolling to the ringside, and now it's all up to Tiger Taylor to face off against Magic Maggie, able to make a retaliation, sending Maggie into the corner, lifting her up to the top turnbuckle, looking for a big move here. Lifting up, look at this power of Tiger Taylor, slams down Magic Maggie, comes down crashing hearts in the center of the ring, here we have, shoulders are down, we have one, we have two, and no, shoulder up. So close to a victory there, and definitely could have caught off both these brawlers by supply, uh, surprise, Tiger Taylor, Alabama slam. Sets up the leg here, pulls it one way, gonna be really tearing that hamstring up. Picking up Kathy here, locks her up, locks up both of the arms here. Try to set up for that Tiger suplex, but ah, uh, Kathy, quick thinking, stomping onto the toes there. Snapmare takedown, lining up here. A beautiful rolling neck snap. Here comes Kathy, beautiful single leg drop, uh, uh, single drop kick, single leg drop kick. Taking down Magic Maggie. Lining her up, another rolling neck snap now. This time Maggie on the receiving end. Setting up here, eat defeat. Maggie gonna be definitely eating defeat as Kathy Gartner goes for the pinfall. Two count and three, Kathy Gartner advances to, to next week's number one contender match for the Women's Grand Prix title. Yeah, some of the replays here. Definitely high action all to get her. Tiger Taylor, she she thought she had her and she had the perfect opportunity. If 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 that was any opportunity to pin Magic Maggie, if there ever was an opportunity to pin her, that was it. Kevin Gardner, however, was one step ahead and really really to ready to bring down the match. Here is your winner, Shy Girl, Kathy Gardner. Remains to be seen who's gonna be facing off against her next week. We'll find out that on Sunday. But now Kathy Gardner one step closer to earning herself that women's Grand Prix title.
stepping into the ring next, we have Brutus the Barbarian and Wolf Anderson. Exciting matchup for some, definitely who love this pair, Brutus the Barbarian and Wolf Anderson. Now, what this match is about last week, these two faced off against one another inside the ring, and after a very heavy match either way around, Brutus the Barbarian was able to get a victory. However, that was only because the referee did not see Wolf Anderson grasping the bottom rope and did not get the rope break. Wolf Anderson has since demanded a rematch and Brutus being the warrior that he is or being obsessed with fighting as he is he has agreed to this rematch between the two so let's see let's see whether or not Wolf, Wolf is able to get some payback going here or at least even out the score here but evening out the score is one thing but getting, the, getting a win over your opponent that's a whole another Especially me. From Valhalla, weighing in at 223 pounds, Wolf Anderson. Especially with men, men such as these, both of them very proud warriors. A Wolf definitely having to live up to that Viking lineage of his. I mean, what's the point of coming back from Valhalla to fi fight here in the, here in the Pro Masters if you're just gonna be? Uh, be, be the second rate, be the second best. No, Wolf is all about becoming number one. Of course, he doesn't uh, believe in silly titles. He does not care about the title business at su such. He only wants a fight. He measures warriors by wh what they're worth to him. And right now, Brutus the Barbarian is worth a whole damn. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The bell has rung, and we're kicking off. Well, well done, nice exhibition match, but uh, honestly, a crutch match requested by Wolf Anderson in order to even out the score here and try try to get a rematch going on here to to make sure. And hopefully, Wolf made it back in the backstage. Very clear to the referee this time to watch the ropes. You know, see for any rope breaks. You know, if he's going to be grasping onto the rope, he wants the referee to see that and. I, I, I think he looked a bit more pale co coming before the start of this match, you know? After all, that's, that's a Viking warrior telling you that. Telling you to do your job, so you don't definitely wanna piss him off or anything. Picking up Wolf Anderson here, lifted up. Lining up, sidewalk slam. Brutus is a barbarian, take a good control of the match so far, but Wolf may be able to mount a comeback here, setting him up against the ropes here. Springs him around, oh, gets countered. Brutus. Oh, gets caught in a close line. Wolf climbing to the top rope here, showcasing that the Viking warriors can also fly, even without wings. Comes in and okay, well maybe 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 they can fly, but they cannot land. Uh, is what I'm claiming from this, missing the drop kick, allowing Brutus to get control of the situation back to his end. Looking up uh, here, we have a choke slam. Huh? And the entire ring shook with that impact. Yeah, we're talking about raw, untamed power here. In the form of a man. Going for the first cover of the fight here. We have one, we have two, and a kick out by Wolf. But at least, it, at least this time he did not try to go for a rope break. So at least that, that's something. Brutus comes in, missing as Wolf rolls through. Gonna be coming springboard. Wait a minute, Wolf using springboard. I mean, yeah, he is outside, keeping both of the legs strapped. Only a one count. 
yeah, Wolf has always been really agile for a Viking warrior, so, you know, taking that, that into consideration, but he has definitely improved his game if he's gonna go for more springboard attacks, and I'm excited to see him going for more. Well, now we have the Brutal Powerbomb combo here. Brutus the Barbarian with the Triple Powerbomb into the cover. Now we have one, we have two, and kick out. Wolf kicking out and getting that shoulder up from the canvas before the three count. Picked up here, Brutus now locking up, lifting up Wolf. L slams down with the Dominator. Hooks up the leg and going for victory. We have one, we have two, and we have a three. Brutus the Barbarian secures himself yet another victory against Wolf Anderson. This time there was no doubt about that. There was no nothing to nothing to concern. The road breaks did not happen. There was nothing nothing uncertain about that. But let's see what Wolf gonna say for this. Brutus offering a handshake. And Wolf does not care for it one bit. Yeah, he had other plans coming into this match. He was hoping for a victory. Oh uh, well, that, 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 that's just how things go here. Sometimes. Anyway, we got a match to move on to, so let's get right on to that. The fourth match of the night is a two-on-two -two tag team match, and this is part of the tag Wrestling Alliance qualifying tournament. Taking part in this, we have the Hunter Bros, Mark and Mac Hunter, facing off against the Queens, PewDiePie Cook and Jackie Jackson. The winner of this match it will be facing off against Punk Hercules and uh, uh, Bartacus, the Olympia Legends, next Sunday. The German Witch Bear will be facing off against the men wrestling, Men's Wrestling Alliance Champions Captain Cooper and Outla Casey in the breakthrough. Here comes definitely one fantastic duo with the moves, with the crew, with the entertainment style, the extreme style, high flying style. Uh, two people with an absolute wonderful style all together. The following contest is scheduled for one fall on the way to the ring at a combined weight of 398 pounds. The Hype Bro! The Hunter Brothers here looking for that opportunity to reclaim or get back to the top of the tag team division to get them the, the Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. Season 2 tag team champions undefeated for the titles there. Now look at the opportunity to get back to doing just that. Well, they, even, even though they're facing off against the tough, very tough opponents, they have plenty of history with. Nonetheless, the one thing is for certain they are here, just for the sake of the audience and for the sake of you. Please, in the crowd is in their blood, and they'll be doing everything to wow you, just as they always do. Here comes definitely just as beloved pair. At a combined weight of 417 pounds, the Queens! Jackie Jackson, the original Queen, and Cutie by Cook, the Femboy, and the Season 3 champion, will be defending his championship reign in the breakthrough event. 6th of August, two weeks from now. Uh, no, what am I saying? Next week on Sunday. Yeah, that, that's more accurate. Yeah, the season is coming to a conclusion. We've had plenty of fights. 
plenty of action happening. We're not, about, not about to stop there. As we're gonna be putting it all on the pinnacle event of the Brawl Masters so far. But let's see. These, these two teams definitely wanting to get get to be a highlight of that so as they'll be potentially one of these teams could be potentially facing off against the men's wrestling alliance champions mark hunter going for the early cover or trying to cop a feel of jackie jackson either where it's only a one kind and jackie forces him off i mean springboard beautiful moonsault into another cover okay mark being a bit very hasty here on two count well by, by the logic of it if he was able to <laughs> oh Okay, Mark is wasting no time whatsoever. He's wanting this match to be over with and I, I don't know, he's he's real serious for someone who's usually about respect and uh, crowd entertainment, maximum crowd pleasing value. Queens making the tag cutie by cook into the ring, but Mark on top of his game tonight. Yeah, very serious uh, hunter tonight. Pulling on the arm of the fanboy here, the season three champion gets no, does a smart into the corner, makes a retali retaliation, stomps it down, and gonna go for the choke. Yeah, full on using the ropes to it as bandits. Kick from Mark. The Hunter definitely in full shape tonight, and I cannot help but to think he's been re energized as after his latest exploits going on in the United States. I mean, he, he, he got to fight for the United States Championship. Beautiful swan tom bomb from the top rope. Hooks up the leg and going for the cover against Cutie Pie. We have one, we have two count. Kick out. Two and a half. Yeah, Mark has been wa making waves and definitely a very impactful part in the ABW. Now he has to do the same here in the Pro Masters, his home show. Oh, Mac Hunter missing the springboard attack. Oh, but able to get the insecurity going. Could also be that the Hunters all together have been training for this position, been waiting for an opportunity to get back into the tag team game to potentially get into that Wrestling Alliance Championship title match up. Yes, they, they're definitely not giving the Queens a, any 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 chances here tonight, and that's saying a lot considering Hunter Bros and the Queens have been facing off against one another in a very good amount of matches, and Queens have, for the most of the time, been beaten more dominant ones. Missile drop kick and now for the cover, two and a kick out. Not quite enough for a free cup, but still getting there. Little by little, uh, bit by bit getting there. Another tag, Mac Hunter now. Andreas Mac Hunter tagged in. Oh, what a kick to the face there. And with that, hoping to get a victory, I don't think. Yeah, only a one count. Nonetheless, a huge opportunity awaiting. Oh, missing the springboard. Handspring kick and with that cutie by cook makes the tag Jackie Jackson now inside the ring Setting up here DDT Taking down the queen and Mac makes the tag to mark Once again this pair about to full full on lay down on an after oh, where well mark taking full on control Riding up right up with a DDT drops the knee right onto the arm there the Flying Fin, definitely not. Actually, is it fair to say Flying Fin? Well, he's the original Flying Fin of the Brawl Masters. Not, not, the, not the original Flying Fin, but the original Flying Fin of the Brawl Masters. But we still have plenty plenty more high flyers from Finland. But we have Mac Hunter and Sweet Marie. So yeah, we have three Flying Fins, but Mark is the one and true. Knee lift, or a hip attack actually. Float over neck breaker. The queen has been taken down and now going for victory. Only a one count though. So much power remaining inside Jackie Jackson. Mark looking to bring it up, but oh, cutie pie. Jackie Jackson makes the attack to cutie pie cook. Catching Mark off guard here. Setting up leg sweep takedown. Leg sweep STO. Mark getting hold, able to make a retaliatory strike here. Lifting up here, Crucifix, trying to set up, what is he doing? Well, yeah, that was very interesting choice and definitely something that allowed Cutie Pie way too awkward with that hold. Did not work out to pay, pay dividends. Cutie Pie locking up. They're unprettier. Mark definitely will be needing a makeover after that. 
goes for the cover, we have one, we have two, and kick out, Mark Hunter kicking out. The Flying Finn, rounded for now, Jackie Jackson, tacked in the original Queen, stomping to the arm there, and coming around, gonna be looking for that Queen, uh, uh, swing of the Queen, the Queen swing, Queen of the swing, I don't actually know what he calls it exactly, but you get it. Coming around and round and round and there he goes. Pretty sure he's gonna be feeling real dizzy after that one. Uh, gonna be wondering where where is up, where he's supposed to be lifting up his arm. Mac coming to save his brother. Gets sent outside for that. And Jackie Jackson now looking to showcase a bit of high flying himself from the top. Elbow striking straight to the chest. Queens rotating and they're definitely starting to mount a good amount of comeback here. Taking control of the match here. Cutie Pie Cook gonna be high flying as well. Talk about a humiliation to the flying fin. He picked up, but Mar Mac Hunter coming to run interference. Double lax and those still connect in center of the ring. Shoulders are down. Cutie Pie hoping to get the victory on the one count. Ma Mac coming to save his brother again gets caught and once again set outside. Mark a bit disoriented, but able to get back into it. Counters Cutie Pie kick to the midsection. Locks up. Is he gonna try again the crucifix? No, he goes for a regular power bomb instead. Yeah, going for the crucifix was an overkill, if you ask me. Mark climbing to the top rope, and the flying fin is about to fly. Gonna be hoping to hit with that headhunter. Oh, way too short on the flight. They're coming in just before Cutie Pie. Jawbreaker takedown. Take it down, Mark, kick to the gut. Mark with a reversal of his own. Cutie Pie with a reversal. Top, top brawlers here. Season of a veteran all around, well, except Mac. Cutie Pie, beautiful head scissors. No, Hurricane Rana. Mark has been taken down. Cutie Pie goes for the tag. Jackie Jackson tagged in, and Mark very slowly say, makes the hot tag to Mac Hunter. Max sending Jackie Jackson into the corner, chopping across the chest here. Pulls on the arm, sending it to the opposite corner, comes around, drop kick. Very beautiful. Springboard, moonsault. Taking down the queen here. Setting up the queen against the ropes here and turns him around, using the top rope to choke him. No, 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 well, I, I don't know, it's effective against a town like him, but... Sent into the corner of the Hunter Bros, Mac Hunter, making him climb up to the top. Setting up here, Mark adding some strikes to the fighter, and Mac Hunter... Yeah, way too much smash there, Jackie Jackson locks up, Bulldog makes the reversal. Take it down, beautiful double axe handle, and now Cutie by Cook tacked in. Mark Hunter had a good good thing going against Jackie Jackson, but ultimately let it slip through. Drop down. Top rope there meeting the throat. Mac getting back up to his feet and now have to face off against Jackie again. This time holding his guard up. Gets countered though, locked up here. Lining up here. Goes for the gut buster, using that crater size of his to his full full on advantage here. Coming about, takes down sit out spine buster. Mac eating up a good amount of damage with that one. Goes for the cover, and only a one count. Being caught from behind, slams down the back get right against the canvas again. And once again, Chucky Jackson taking in cutie by Cook. The season 3 champion gets caught, Spinebuster delivered. What a reversal there from Mac Hunter. Fully prepared for that one. Shimming around, goes for the tag to make his brother. Mark Hunter now. Gets caught with a kick, another one setting up. Head scissors, DDT. Who up the leg here, going for victory. We have one, we have two, and the Q, uh, not so, not so, 2.9. Queens almost advancing. Jackie Jackson taking out Mac Hunter with a uh, Mac Hunter with a spear. 
PewDiePie coming in with the splash. Mark has been fully grounded. The flying thing about to be taken down, sent into the corner of the Queens. What is Jackie trying to enter the ring here? PewDiePie Cook with a he he another Hurricane Rana. Mark able to roll through, single leg drop kick. So can see how the job is done, picks up. The season 3 champion tracking him to the corner of the Hunter Pro Snow parades him around. Taking way too long with that, I'm gonna be paying for that. Beautiful moonsault kick. Beauty by staggering backwards as it's been lifted up. Ooh, beautiful rolling alley oop. Getting the leg here and now going for the cover. Mark Hunter hoping to advance the Hunter Pros too and a kick out. Yeah, both these teams definitely want the victory. Dropkick landed by Mark, classic. And now going for the tag, rotating. Here comes Smack Hunter. Setting up here, oh, gets countered. Elbows to the midsection, really just driving them through. Catching hold and sending Mac against the ropes here at the cutie pie. About to lock up the head scissors again. Beautiful DDT. Hooks up the leg and going for victory. Here we go. We have one. We have not even a two count as Mark Hunter there to break it up. Save his brother from the fall and keep this match up going. Making the tag. Cutie by Cook. Tagging in Jackie Jackson. Sto who goes for the stomp and setting up. Beautiful solid camel clutch hold here. Mac Hunter trying to hold through, trying to muster up any way to endure against Jackie Jackson here, but oh, gets let go. All right then, interesting choice, but definitely a good amount of strain with that one. Oh, smashing the head against the turnbuckle here, and now lining up, S gonna be setting up a power bomb, slams in right into the corner. Talk about a buckle bomb. Getting hold of Mac and trying to track him to the corner of the Queens. Trapped, oh, elbow to the face there. Mac able to free himself, setting up DDT. The Queen is down. And with that, Mac takes the opportunity, taxing Mark. Get setting up, beautiful takedown. Able to turn it into a sleeper hold. Takedown and now on the top rope, Mark looking to fly, jumps down before Jackie hits him, gets caught nonetheless. Lifted up, Fisherman, Brainbuster. Tag as we make, Cutie by Cook now inside the ring. Mark, beautiful drop kick right into the center of the ring. Tag in, Mac Hunter again. Both pairs throw and he, oh there we go, the cutter. The Mac cutter, I don't know what he calls that, but it's a cutter, all right. There we go, we have two, and it's all up. Kick out be right before a free count. Yeah, Mac was hoping to get a surprise spin for that, but not enough. Flatliner though. Picking up. Kick to the midsection DDT. And Mac now looking for a big maneuver here. Better watch out. Jackie Jackson tosses him down straight onto his partner's leg though, so take that how you will, but still. Pretty sure Max still ended up eating up most of the damage there. Lifting up, Cutie Pie drives him down. Jackie offering the hand, but Cutie Pie facing the other way around. Head scissors and elbow to the top of the head. Mac gets countered, kick to the face there. Oh, boot to the face there from Mac. Cutie Pie trying to make that tag, but still too far away from Jackie to actually be get there. Mac going for the cover. Here we have one and break up there by Jackie Jackson. The queen caught here and sent outside of the rope there. Now it's all up to Cutie by Cook to ensure that he can survive. Up until Jackie Jackson makes a recovery, but gets countered. Mac Hunter still keeping up with the control, lifting up Fisherman. No, turns it into a small packet spin. This could be the match right here. One and a kick out. Yeah, the surprise spinning attempt definitely got Mac off guard, but not enough to get a victory going. 
turning around, gonna be setting up another unprettier. Yeah, both the Hunter brothers getting that taste of that into the victory. Now we have two and three. PewDiePie Cook securing a victory for the Queens. They're gonna be advancing and facing off against the Olympia Legends this Sunday to determine the number one contender who will be facing off against the Cooper's crew for the Men's Wrestling Alliance Championship titles. Here are some of the replays of the match. Definitely a great match. Both teams giving everything they had and definitely a matchup that they, uh, well, not was not unlike was unlike any any previous ones. The Hunter brothers this time around actually making real good effort against the Queens, but unfortunately for them, it was ultimately not enough. Here are your winners, the Queens. Gonna so be real excited to see whether or not these two are gonna be facing off against the Cooper's crew. Nonetheless, it's gonna be a season one veteran galore all the way to the end. Coming up to the halfway point of the show, we're gonna be having a women's 101 match. A ladder match at that. This is for the women's internet title, internet championship title. The challenger tonight, Diane Van Dam, hoping to take down the defending champion, Sweet Marie. The following contest is a ladder match and is for the women's internet championship. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, once again the internet championship title on the line here, and here comes the challenger of tonight, representing the team of Too Cool, Diane Van Damme. Yeah, I suppose teaming up with Snow Princess Yuri has allowed her, I mean, I, I heard this in the backstage, I'm not confirming it, but I heard th there was talk about with the management that Diane Van Damme actually got this title opportunity just because Snow Princess Yuri was there to pull on the strings to get, arrange this matchup. Definitely making the right call there by joining up with her instead of Magic Maggie, but now, now she has to face up against another Season 1 veteran brawler, Sweet Marie, for the title. And again, if there's anyone who can do it, yeah, I, I assume any of the newcomers who can do it, Diane Van Damme definitely stands tall and proud. Power, strength, athletic ability. She's one competitor to watch out for. And here's our defending champion, the hometown girl, Helsinki, Finland president, Sweet Marie, the women's internet champion, having defeated Aunt Teresa last week for the title, and now really excited to be defending it in the, in the ladder match. Yeah, just like her mentor, Mark Hunter, she's all about the extreme, extreme style. So it should be to no one's surprise that she would go for a ladder match. Even in a one-on-one -on -one situation, even though, if reasonably speaking, there will be way more beneficial match types out there. But she still wants the ladder match, she still wants to reach high, aim high, get that title up from the height. And uh, honestly speaking, the ladder match is in that sense a lot more fair than a one full contest, you know? Right, and the contenders 
The challenger and the champion are their place. The bell has rung and this ladder match is on. Women's internet championship title on the line. Beautiful wheelbarrow into a stunner. Dropping down the leg as the champion is definitely starting out nice and heavy against the challenger and already already <laughs> being a bit of a bit, a bit of cocky here. Yeah. Well, she's definitely going for the extreme and definitely showcase a good acrobatic talent here against the challenger with enough damage stone she rushes outside and gets that ladder pretty early on the match but hey why waste time on it comes in with the ladder and about to use it as a weapon smacks down Diane Van Damme and now Marie the defending champion climbing to the top of the ladder who comes down I, I guess she realized that the ladder is a bit off it's not at the center of the ring and thus it cannot Reads to the title, another stunner there. Sweet Marie taking down Diane. There she goes, climbs to the top of the ladder. Gonna look for a very big high fly maneuver here. Waiting for the opportunity. Oh, there she goes, like lightning fast striking down. Missing with the springboard. Diane Van Damme takes the opportunity to climb the ladder. Reaches for that title and trying to earn her for herself. She only needs to unhook it and it's all hers, but Marie making short work of her legs there. Catching hold, setting up here, power bomb, locked in and locked down, Diane taken out with that. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago that Sweet Marie was defending the Women's Wrestling Alliance title in a ladder match with her tag team partner, uh, Queen Raiden, against the Thrill Seekers, the current Raiden champions. So for her to go for a natural uh, ladder match, actually that match was a TLC fight, uh, but this was uh, this one is more pure, or less chaotic. Marie with the hail Marie, take it down. Diane Van Damme and now reaching for a title. Maybe she takes the opportunity. No climbs to the top of the ladder. Yeah, she just wanted an excuse to use the ladder, missing the leg drop there. Able to toss off the challenger though, kick to the arm there and with that makes the climb. Able to avoid Diane, pulling on the leg though, pulls down Marie. Picks her up here. Setting up, lifting up. What is he, a gory special? What is he, a gory, yeah, gory special into a, 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 a face buster. Climbing to the top of the ladder here, Diane Van Damme. She's gonna climb all the way to the top, gonna be looking for, to fly. Oh, but gets the ladder collapse. Sweet Marie, quick thinking there, takes down Diane Van Damme. Sending her over the top rope, and with that, she's free to do with the ladder as she wishes, putting it into the center of the ring. Perfect place, as there's no doubt about it, she can reach the title now more easily like that. Makes goes for it and tries to start unhooking it. Diane Van Damme joining on the top but gets caught. Headlock now into a beautiful diving neck breaker. Well with that Diane Van Damme is taken down and Omari hoping to add to the damage. Here comes the splash just diving straight down. But if that's called a wet nap Setting up a head scissors hold here, she's hoping to get a submission here as well. It's not gonna end the match, but... Well, this might be a mistake on Marie's end, you know? Uh, allowing... Diane to toss her off and get back up to her feet. Diane does not care one bit. Oh, beautiful springboard collapsing both Diane as well as the ladder underneath her. Setting up... Oh, leg drop right under the ladder. Diane avoiding the attack and... Marie didn't even make make the jump far enough to begin with. Oh, setting up here. Beautiful Hurricane Rana. Franker, Frankensteiner style. The champion definitely dictating the pacing of this fight here. There are no doubts in my mouth that she will be retaining. Climbing to the top of the ladder. That one looking. Reaching for the title belt of hers. No progress has been made either way around, so still could be anyone's game, but if Marie is able to keep on 
dominating in the ring as he has. Powerbomb drop down. Picks up the champion. Sending her all straight to the steel of the ladder. Gets back up to her feet. Comes around. Setting up Hurricane Rana. Beautiful takedown. Already taking the opportunity. Climbs to the top of the ladder here. Diane just watching on the sidelines. Not sure what to do here. As Marie is starting to unhook the belt. Yeah. What is she doing? She's just standing there. Marie being a bit panicky with the hooks there. Fumbling around her fingers. Not able to unhook the title whatsoever. If she would relax herself just a bit. She could make good amount of progress here. But instead spending around. Fumbling around her fingers. Diane Van Damme. Is she, has she given up? Yeah I think she just full on has given up. She does not care anymore. She, she just full on doesn't care about anymore about the Marie retaining the title. Okay, well, that's a very interesting outcome to this match. Not one I was expecting, but yeah, she doesn't. She's not even sad about it. Yeah, she did not. Uh, she stopped caring about the title halfway through. All right, then. Well, that's definitely one way to retain the title and one way. For Marie to ensure that she's going to be defending that title next week as well. Here is your winner and still women's internet champion, Sweet Marie. All right then, that will do it. We're moving on to the next match then. Next up, we're going to be having a six. Uh, we are, we're going to be having a four-man table match. This is going to be a number one contender match for the men's Grand Prix Championship title. The winner of this match will be facing off, off against William Styles in the breakthrough event for the title. Let's see whether which is going to be. Is it going to be the Blue Brute, Scorpio Scotty, the Hero Kazarian, or Yusuf Ahmed? see a commemoration of the breakthrough event coming up next week on Sunday this tables match is going to be determining who will be facing off against William Styles for the men's Grand Prix title rules are over, as simple as always get your opponent through a table make them uh, use the, your opponent to break a table and you're the winner no pinfalls no submissions no countouts no disqualifications Plenty of tables spread around the ringside and also more underneath the ring should, should there be a need for it. First one to enter the legendary bounty hunter, Cressa Milrani, the blue fruit, and here comes the first of his opponents, a very powerful brawler, a very powerful warrior, survivor of the wasteland, and a hold together a time traveler like that. First, representing the Rough Riders from the wasteland, weighing in at 225 pounds, Scorpion Scotty. Yeah, Scorpion Scotty, throughout his uh, time here with the Brawl Masters, both in season three and here in the season four, he's been making a real mark in the show. Mixing a bit of technical mastery with striking capabilities that Scorpio Deathlock of his 
It's definitely something that the other brawlers will be watching out for. Even though it cannot secure him a victory tonight, nonetheless. They have to be mindful of it after all. If you get your legs, legs taken out, there's absolutely no, nothing you can do. There's no way you can escape. End up being sent through a table. But I'm sure Scorpion and Scotty will have a way, uh, plenty more sophisticated, uh, more simplistic plan than just a highly advanced. After all, this is all about the first first man come, uh, first man come, first man serve. You lose your opportunity taking too long with your st strategies and plans, and you're gonna lose the opportunity all to get her. Kazarian, also a season 3 brawler, who made a remarkable mark in the series at, at his time, at his peak so far. Looking, looking to wow the crowd and try to get into that men's Grand Prix title opportunity, get, get into that position to challenge William Styles. That would definitely be a statement from him. He definitely has the strength to survive this match, but is he able to? It, does he have the speed and the, the technical mastery, the strategy to be the first one to win here? And from Istanbul, Turkey, weighing in at 495 pounds, Yosef Ahmed! The biggest of them all, the Turkish Titan, powering over everyone else in the Pro Masters when it comes to size. And there is there is no man quite like him taking part in the series and that definitely shows. He'll hope for a he'll be hoping for an easy fight and he definitely has the size advantage going his way around, but uh, that's not to count out anyone else. Uh, I mean these are all powerful men taking part in this fight. It could be anyone's game. It, it, it just remember, re, uh, yeah. As, as said, it it's it, it comes down to who makes the first opportunity, who is in the first one to take the opportunity. Here, Scorpius Scotty already locking up Yusuf Ahmed, setting him outside with a stunner. Meanwhile, Casaria setting up against the Blue Brood. As uh, well, I didn't say it earlier, but these two have a history with one another. Scorpius Scotty looking to fly as yes, Yusuf Ahmed comes in double axe handle to the outside. And Kazarian is left to fight with Blue Brute inside the ring here. Bounty Hunter versus a hero. Elbow to the back, another one. Dropping him down, oh, rolls up. Setting up beautiful jumping neck breaker, takes down Kazarian. On the ringside there, there is Yusuf Ahmed taking control. Scorpius Scotty is smashing him around. They are effortlessly tossing. Talk about power display. The man is absolutely a titan you cannot compete with, unless you have a good strategy. You're just gonna uh, go 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 up against him, thinking you can overpower him. You have to actually have some kind of an idea on how you're gonna take him down, keep him grounded for as long as possible, hoping to end the match right here. Carrying Scorpius, carry around. No goes for a backbreaker. Oh, drops there. Well, one of the legs got pro again, but not enough to break the entire table. It has to break in half. So yeah, not enough to end the match right there. He was almost in a position. He could have slammed him down there. But I suppose he did not muster up enough strength right yet. Oh, smashing the head against the security barrier. Breaking him open. And Miva on the ringside. Kazaria getting the table. Tossing it inside the ring. There are two tables right now inside the ring. Blue Brood and Kazarian playing a bit of cat and mouse right now. Kazaria looking for yet another table. I don't know what he's planning. Other than to fill the ring with tables. The audience is one demanding tables and Katsarian definitely providing them in full amount here. Oh no, neck breaker, drop it down. I think both of them landing right onto the harder part of the tables, right onto the steel legs. And to the rim as well. Oh, Katsarian tossed down onto, onto a table again. Making Blue Brute drop the table there. Lifting it up, plants him down, yeah. It's not easy landing on that side of the table. 
Scorpio Scotty gets another table involved. Four tables, well, currently three tables inside the ring. One of them got ejected out, but four tables introduced into this match so far. So that's one for every person. Unfortunately, it's only one, the first one, first one to actually break it gets the victory here. Gets to face off against William Stars in the Grand Prix Championship match in the Breakthrough Premium Show. Setting up solid neck breaker. Scorpio Scotty takes on Blue Brute. Kazarian is made to force a uh, drop the table as Yusuf Ahmed comes in attacking close line in the corner Lining up here comes the Titans elbow Kazarian drop down and you can already see crack on one of those tables that was Yusuf Ahmed delivering Scorpio Scotty through it. Oh Scorpio Scotty potentially ending. Oh just a bit off the target sidewalk slam Neck breaker now. No still not there yet. Yeah, way too much, way too big a man to try try to take down just like that. Coming around, discuss elbow to the back of the head there, Blue Brute. Take it down, Scorpio Scotty coming around of Yusuf Ahmed as well. Look at this power! Slams down the palm and now here we go, Scorpio Scotty with the death lock. The Scorpion death lock locked in. Not gonna be ending the match with a submission, but definitely straining the legs, fully eliminating them out of the process. Unless Kazarian is able to overpower his way out of this one. Yeah, he managed to do just that. He's still in this fight and able to measure up a count and come back. Oh no, Yusuf Ahmed with the blue brute on the top. He's able to fight off, avoiding that table. Scorpius Scotty taking down Kazarian. It's real close to the table. Scorpius Scotty sent outside. DDT from the blue brute to Yusuf. Kazarian escaping the ring. I don't know why I go there with the match could have uh, the match is so come to a, uh, so close to a conclusion already. Loop root. Trapping the hand. Stomping right onto it. Yusuf Ahmed, no way out of that one. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You take down a giant and you keep them down no matter what head, but they're not not enough to break the table, but that's still a five oh well that is five hundred pounds of man, so you know. Sending Yusuf against the table, proof, proof. Oh, what a beautiful Grand Champions uppercut. And with that, enough force was sent through Yusuf to break the table. Ladies and gentlemen, we have our number one contender. And of course, it's none other than the legend, the hero, the Grand Champion, Mandalore's Chosen. The Blue Brood. With that we have one of our matches up coming up into, into the breakthrough event. William Styles better get ready as the bounty hunter is coming for you. The Blue Brood and William Styles meeting in the Grand Prix title opportunity match. The seventh match of the night is also gonna be a number one contender match as we are deciding the women's number one contender for the martial arts title who's gonna be facing off against Selena Bochap in the breakthrough event. Is it gonna be Sarah Bella Bailey, Gloria Garcia, Victoria Sokolova or Anna Crossbecker? One woman who has been pursuing this title for the longest time, Sarah Bella Bailey. This is, well, I'm not gonna say the last opportunity, but well, it's the last opportunity of the season for her to get into that championship title to challenge Selena Bocha for that Women's Wrestling Alliance 
Uh, I'm sorry, martial arts title, women's martial arts title, number one contender match here about to kick off. Now she, she's been real to seeky, seeky that pursuing that ever since joining the Brawl Masters. And tonight, well, tonight it's a make, make or break. Swim or sing. Fatal four way match up. She has to come out on top. But she better watch out as there are plenty of women, plenty of talented women, plenty of title hungry women looking to do just the exact same. Still keeping on with their singles competition, the Garcia sisters have not shown well they haven't been in contact with one another as far as I know. So yeah, they're they're continuing on with their own competitions as they are. Gloria Garcia standing to earn big, standing to uh, get a very huge opportunity for herself. If she's able to pull through this match, going up against Selena Bochamp in the breakthrough event, determined the women's Martial arts champion. That, that's going to be absolutely a huge opportunity for her. And honestly, if she ends up going there, she has a very high chance of actually defeating Selena. I, I would assume that her style would definitely counter Selena's, but we would have to wait to see on that. Anyway, yet here comes yet another woman who has been very consistent here in the women's martial arts division, and definitely a joy to watch. Her style is just un uncomparable to anyone else's. The Ukrainian Brawl Arena. And from Kiev, Ukraine, Victoria Sokolov. Blue skies and sunflowers, all about the celebration. I don't know. Victoria st looking to make a remarkable mark in the Pro Masters. She has definitely been proving herself a very capable. Honestly, one of the be be better, better and greater people we drafted in the third season. And the final contender taking part in this fatal four-way match. Representing the new foundation. The loyal enforcer. And representing the new foundation from Cologne, Germany. Anna Crush Baker. Yeah, you heard that right. Anna Crush Baker. She's uh, thanks to Kelly for showing up here with the Pro Master. She's not well, not ashamed, or I don't know if she is ashamed at all of her pre previous family ties to Martha Baker. But now she's living up to it, and the, I, I, adding that to her repertoire that has turned her into a very powerful fighting machine. He's a veteran brawler as well. I have to think of it. Yeah, this, this is uh, exactly. Well, no, not quite. We have a season one veteran brawler, Anna Cross. From season two, we have Gloria Garcia. And from season three, Sarah Bella and Victoria. So, yeah, th think about that if you're uh, putting, putting down any pets. But then again, look at, look at the standings here in, in, in a. Corpse, you don't know what's been going on, what kind of a scoring situation has been going on. I mean, we're talking about, well, if we take a look, Anna Cross with four victory points going on, Gloria Garcia five, Sarabella Bailey has three, and Victoria Sokolova, well, she has three as well. So, yeah, 
pretty even scoring, but there there is there there are those two that are di differenting from the group. And a cross rolling to the outside. Gloria Garcia, Victoria Sokolova, and Sarabella Bailey inside the ring still. As Gloria and Sarabella are up against one another. Victoria rolls to the outside as well. Gloria now sending up beautiful leapfrog. Crumbs in with a cross body. Trying to keep the Jamaican brawler down. Gets caught in a dragon screw. Anna Cross now back inside the ring. No countouts, no disqualifications. Anna Cross pumping herself up. Oh, but gets kicked into the corner. Victoria keeping her trap comes around. Oh, looks at the head scissors. What is he gonna be pulling off? Hurricane Vana. Sarabella, meanwhile, eager to take on Gloria Garcia. Missing the slap, allowing Gloria to take the control of the situation. Spinebuster. Victoria, meanwhile, mounting. Anna Cross stomping to the, te to the gut there, to the torso. Punches to the head. And another stomp. Yeah, why change something that works? Especially against a woman who's a lot bigger than your beautiful springboard kick. Anna Cross once again rolling outside. Definitely not say showcasing that new foundation e enforcer uh, status of hers, but I, I suppose she's more fighting more naturally now and less strict. Victoria Sokolova has taken control of the match up here. Fatal four-way match up in her control and hooks up the leg of Sarabella Bailey in the cover. Broken up by Anna Cross coming to attack the back there. Takes down Victoria with a close line. And that's a whole lot of power. That's a whole lot of woman in there. Being locked up here. Gloria Garcia. Vertical suplex. Goes for the cover. We have one and we kick out. Well, lines have been thrown once more. Sarabella going up against Gloria and Victoria versus Anna. Gloria gets ejected out of the ring. Sarabella in hot pursuit. And uh, Victoria takes the opportunity. So the sunset split. Into the cover, we have one, we have two count, and three! Victoria Sokolova steals a win, and with that, she'll be facing off against Selena Bochamp in the breakthrough. Let's take a look at the replays, I don't know where the hell this camera was stationed at, but whoever put that there, you're fired. Yeah, just sne sneaking a vi win, and not only that, but sneaking a win against a season one veteran. Well, absolutely a huge win for her. She definitely came here to impress and she definitely did just that. She will be an excellent addition to the breakthrough card. Yes, with that, Victoria Sokolova and Selena Bochamp set to go in the breakthrough event next Sunday. Here we go, to moving on, we still have two more matches coming up. Both of them rated our championship matches. Next up, we have the eighth match of the night. One on one's extreme submission fight on Teresa, taking the, her title opportunity and challenging Black Rose Julia for the women's rated R title. The following contest is an extreme rules match and is for the women's rated R championship. Very, very excitable pair of brawlers about to enter the ring. Definitely a very good mix up for this match. And as these two definitely are full on set to go, set to go, and set things into the most extreme as they can come. Here comes the challenger who earned this title opportunity last Sunday. Here we have on Teresa. Yeah, looking real excited as always. As yeah, I, and I yes, I did manage to explain to her that yeah, you probably don't want to use use this title opportunity to go for the internet title instead. Want to go for the well, any other titles and rated R is the one she felt was the most closest to her heart. So she's gonna be aiming for that now.
could you imagine on Teresa as the rated R champion? And here comes the defending champion. The always dominant, the season one veteran brawler. The black flower of the Ghana. Black Rose Julia. Once again, hoping to get a good victory, an easy victory with that extreme submission stipulation she has come up with. Very interesting a matchup, definitely a le level up from a regular old submission match. This this is gonna be one hell of a showdown. I, I honestly say she should, have, should have, she should have dialed it down and gone for a regular submission match against old Teresa, but hey, it's her. it was Julia's call, so here we are. Introducing the challenger from Bogota, Colombia, Crazy Psycho Teresa. And introducing the champion from Accra, Ghana, she is the women's rated R champion, Black Rose Julia. Yeah, only the most unhinged of brawlers are actually willing to go for this title. As we've seen this both in the women's and the men's divisions. If you're looking for unhinged women, here are the top, new na uh, top two names in that account. At least when it comes to the women's division. And here we go, the bell has rung. And this extreme submission fight is on. Now, the rules are basically the same as the submission fight. However, this one adds the extreme element into it, allowing use of weapons. And a whole multitude of weapons have been placed underneath the ring just for this match. So, no disqualification, no countouts, no pinfalls. It all comes down to you getting your opponent to tap out or to knock them out via a submission hold. Setting up here, lining up, solid neck breaker from the champion. Climbing to the top rope, now looking for a big maneuver here. Black Rose about to fly off and connect it beautifully with that moonsault press. Gets caught, okay, gets a hold of the challenger, puts on the brakes before reaching the rope, but gets caught, electric chair, drop, taking down on Teresa. Yeah, Julia full on dictating the, this matchup right here. As she, this is exactly, she's full on in her element. This is the one thing she wants to do, one thing she enjoys doing. Lift it up. Oh, beautiful. Very beautiful. Fisherman suplex there. Reversal from the challenger now catching hold. Setting out, trying to drag on that mask of Julius. Trying to dig in those fingers as deep as possible. Coming in from the top rope. Missing as Julia gets back up to her feet. Yeah, poorly timed, otherwise a great uh, idea from Aunt Teresa. Lifting her up, gonna go for that sin breaker. Taking down the leg and definitely gonna be hurting a good while. I mean, the sin is one place you do not want to get attacked. Then again, there are plenty of places you don't also want to get attacked. Coming in, knee drop to the face. And now setting up a head scissors lock here. Figure four head scissors. Leg strapped across, oh. Teresa able to pull, pull, pu push her off, gets locked up, though caught, brought bound and brought down with a vertical suplex. A champion so far full on dictating and no extreme rules have been applied here. No, neither of them has gone for we weapons. Neither of them has done really something that would be a close for a disqualification in a, in a regular match. 
Teresa able to make a counter, elbow to the back, coming from the ropes, another elbow, drops down. And springboard, beautiful moonsault, unfortunately hitting straight into the canvas. Yeah, Autorisa is not doing great with those springboard attacks tonight. Looking for a weapon underneath, but Fluff from Julia puts a stop to that. Setting up here, stomp right onto the arm. Kicks and knees to the face, arm crusher here. Trying to keep the psycho on down. As much as he's able to, cranking the neck here to the max, trying to soften up that head area. Sending Teresa against the apron and the steel steps. Julia climbing back inside the ring and declaring the match to be over now. Well, there are no count outs, so it cannot end like this. The submission has to take place inside the ring, so there's that. Julia still has a lot of work going on here, setting up here. Goes for a beautiful hangman's neck breaker. I know what she's saying to the crowd, but uh, no, no doubt about it. Degrading on Teresa. She's got a baseball bat on Teresa, getting a full on smack with that. Straight to the face and to the torso, able to get back in, straight to the face again. Back again she goes, goes for the press. Cross body press making Julia drop the bat. Still those heavy impacts will definitely be hampering her down unless she's able to get some comeback going on here. Go no, gets a leg caught here. Rolling neck snap. Once again crossing the arm and Julia once again. Figure four head scissors lock. Trying to get the submission that way. Very interesting not to use, you know, the forns. You know what I'm talking about. Catching hold of the challenger, swinging neck breaker. And once again, no, not gonna go for the bat, gonna go for a big maneuver on the top rope. Gonna fly and missing with the knee drop. On Teresa, getting back up to her feet. Lifting up the champion here, going for a right here into a TKO. Picking up the champion, Black Rose Julia, being a, feeling a bit stunned after that one, goes for the neck breaker. Picks her up again. Very systematic approach here, DDT now. Definitely the head being made the primary target here. Catching hold of the baseball bat and bring it down right onto the arm. Multiple times, definitely the right idea for Teresa to try to take the arms out. Setting up here, neck breaker again. Yeah, take out the arm to avoid the submission hold and take out the neck area to go for, for your own submission. Missing the leg drop, countered. Springboard moonsault. Stomping right under the arm and now setting up. Could I go for a colossal clutch? Really just demonstrating a good amount of power and strength here. Dragging on the face and all to the back and the neck as well. She's getting back up to her feet, though, allowing Julia to get... Yeah, she's way too tall for this. Yeah, if you allow Julia to get back up to her feet, you might as well... <laughs> not. You might as well let her go at that point. Coming in. Leg drop, springboard style. The finishing maneuver of Aunt Teresa stomping right under the arm now. Looking once again with that colossal clutch. We could have a new champion after all. Dragging the face here. And you can see Julia critting her teeth as much as she can. Trying to endure it, getting back up to her feet, getting to the knees. And yeah, there she goes with that. There's no doubt about it. She's able to break the hold. Slamming Teresa on her back and gets back into the fight. Gets countered though. Teresa spins her around. Traps the arm. Oh, what a elbow to the face. Picking up the leg here, another rolling neck snap, really just tearing apart that hamstring of Aunt Teresa. And now setting up the entwining rows, putting those forms to work. And really just trying in the center of the ring, not that rope breaks could end this match either way. Aunt Teresa ends up tapping out. We have a retaining champion, Black Rose Julia. And with that, there's no doubt about it, she'll be defending next time, she'll be defending the title. It will be at this uh, Brawlmasters breakthrough.
once again next the next week on Sunday the season four finale will be crowning the season four champion at that uh, 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 by the end of the night. Julia once again showcasing her pure own dominance in the series. I don't think there there are many women who, <laughs> just like with the men's division, there are there are less and less women who actually want to go for that rated R title. But pretty sure we still have plenty of challengers waiting for the opportunity. We will have to see at the breakthrough. With that, it's time for the main event of tonight. Once again, the men's rated R title is on the line as E-Racer has been scoring the men's division altogether. No one willing to, uh, no one there to willingly chase, uh, go after and challenge the e Demon Kick tonight. The challenger tonight comes from the first match of the night, Green Cycle, who ended up tapping out in the matchup, and thus he's been chosen and he's been forced to take part in the main event to face off against the Demon King. Let's see whether or not he's... Actually, he already had one match behind him, a very grueling match, and now he has to face off against the Demon King. Let's see what will happen. The following contest is an Extreme Rules match, and is for the Men's Rated R Championship. All right, at, at least he had, at least the challenger tonight ha had enough of a spine to actually show up to this match. For a second, a second there, the management was actually talking about setting up additional security to the backstage, the locker room, to ensure that Green Cyclone would be not allowed to exit the premise. But here he comes and looking quite confident in this. I don't know, is he actually thinking he can win this? I mean, he had a very tough match. A 30 minute match at the start, start of the show tonight, so if, if he still has any energy left, I mean, that, that's a full on miracle. Nonetheless, he's definitely lo looking like he's ready for this title opportunity. He still has a title opportunity of his own that he earned last Sunday. He's unable to cash it in tonight, but uh, he's gonna be cashing that in next Sunday. He's gonna go be going for that men's. Martial Arts Championship title are currently held by Marshall David, but uh, you know, if he gets injured up anymore here tonight, especially against the Demon King, I don't think he's gonna be able to compete for the rest of the sea, for, for the remaining of the season. So, you know, if, if he's hobby, hobby, he better just, I don't know, give up the match or something as soon as possible. Then again, that's not a warrior way, is it? Here comes the defending champion, who's definitely more than happy to be out here once again. Yeah, he has made this rated R division into his own personal circus. He's the ringmaster, and everyone else is are just clowns to him. Or at least he's been making a fool out of everyone who has been coming into challenge and uh, after that well currently no one wants to challenge him that's the problem going on but nonetheless green cyclo we have got him in well we have forced him into this fight so we, we, let's see which one is it gonna be is it gonna be the green green cyclo the bush and martial artist or the demon king the green demon eraser and the defending champion let's see Introducing the challenger from the Shang Dynasty, weighing in at 156 pounds, Green Cyclone. And introducing the champion from the pits of hell, 
weighing in at 235 pounds. He is the men's rated R champion, Demon King E. Razor. All right, let, let, let's see what, what's gonna come. No, in Demon King Eraser's track record, this is either gonna be a real painful match or a real short match. And there it is, the championship title on the line here. Let's see what will come. And here we go, the bell has rung and Green Cyclone keeping up with the guard, but gets caught by the Demon King immediately. Yeah, no, no guard is gonna be helping. Slapped in the back of the head, and now gonna be stomping down the Wushan martial artist. And the Demon King already starting out. Green Cyclone will definitely need to come up with something here quick if he's hoping to have any hopes of earning the title, let alone walk, walking home from this match in in. Some, some kind of a condition, you know, being able to walk all together. Demon King gesturing at Green Cyclone to get back up, jumps down. Cuts has hold of him, sending him into the corner now. Comes up and it's gonna go for punches in the corner. We have one, we have two, we have three, we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Finishing off the full, full lowdown. Green Cyclone already down and the champion going for the cover. We have one, we have two, and Green Cyclone kicks out. Lining up. Ooh, what a nasty kick to the back. Yeah, he's not even fighting back. Green Cyclone is not fighting back whatsoever. The Demon King is just take, taking full on, full on slaughtering the man. Well, basically, could might as well be. On the top rope again, Demon King looking to fly here. Comes in, dives in and takes down. Jumping clothesline. Oh, gets rolls back up to his feet. Green Cyclone makes a counter, drops down the champion. And with that, gonna go for a springboard maneuver. Landing absolutely nowhere. Gets back up to his feet though. Extreme rules, uh, of course, applying Spanish fly. And rolls into the cover. Green Cyclone, only a one count. Green Cyclone trying to get the crowd to his side. Gets caught by the Demon King again. Uppercut landing. Being picked up by the champion. Getting caught. Trying to track him by Green Cyclone. Able to force the separation. And with that opportunity to exit the ring. Where is he going? He's escaping. He's actually running away. The Demon King in hot pursuit. They're actually going to be exiting the stage here. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. They have both. Both the challenger and the champion both exited the stage here. We'll try to get our camera crew to the backstage as soon as possible. Right now, it sounds like Green Cyclone. Yeah, Green Cyclone is running, running in the backstage, ma making a head and uh, able to lose. At, at least trying to lose. Demon King Eraser here. I think we have... Uh, Oh, okay, we got a crew, crew in place. Okay, Demon King Eraser C coming to the parking garage now. Uh, we'll, we'll take you there right now. All right, uh, here we have a uh, link up to the backstage here. The Demon King C uh, coming in around the corner here to look for Green Cyclo. We have lost sight of him. And so so it seems like the Demon King, well, the Demon King definitely has lost sight of him as he's scouring the... Backstage area here in the parking hall. Wonder where, where he is. Checking around the boxes here. He could be hiding, you know. Checking in the security room. Demon King trying to taunt the man to come out and face him, but I, I don't think he's anywhere near, you know. Trying to yell the green cyclone to come out here, but it's not working out. Maybe, maybe in the parking hall. Maybe, maybe that's where it be. The match cannot officially end, you know, in a disqualification. You know, it cannot end. It has to end inside the ring. So, unless the match gets called off, then that's the only way. But, but wait a minute, what's this? Who is this? Eraser, the 
Rated R champion got taken down and got taken down again. What the hell is going on here? There's a kind of masked man jumping on the Rated R champion on the ringside here. Uh, I, I mean on the backstage here. Multiple stars dropping the elbow to the arm there. Just who is this masked warrior who suddenly appeared here is taken down. The Rated R champion Hurricane Rana in him on the concrete here as they're getting closer and closer to the parking hall here and deeper into it. It seems like sending the Rated R champion against the concrete barrier there locking him up now. Brings him up. Beautiful suplex there. Yeah, we might have just have a whole new player enter into this game here. Never seen this man before. Never, uh, I, I don't know, there's, there's something, I mean, there's something familiar about him, but at the same time, no, no, just no idea who, who the hell this is and who the hell he, he thinks he is coming, coming to this series and just attacking our Rated R champion and Demon King at that. Going for strikes here, Demon King unable to measure out any sort of comeback to get her as he's been caught completely by the surprise here, lifted up, taken down with a base lock takedown. Picking up the champion as more and more damage being done here and the two getting even further away from the arena here. Getting closer and closer to the exit there. Picks up, brings down the spine buster and I believe that's it. The champion has been taken out. Yeah, well, well, that was, that was definitely interesting. Um, yeah, so there, there is actually someone who's actually willing to go up against the rated R champion, not only winning, but uh, uh, apparently able to do just that. Um, uh, I'll try and get an interview. I'll try and see what what what, what this man is all, all about as soon as I'm able to. But we will we will most likely have to wait and see. Uh, this, I mean, if if they're keeping a mask on, they, uh, I suppose they're all about hiding their true identity or whatnot, but uh, I'm pretty sure that this is all, only the beginning uh, between the feud between the, well, uh, there's now to be the new Rated R Challenger and the Rated R Champion, but in any case, that'll, that'll do for our show tonight. I hope you enjoyed the matches tonight. I hope you enjoyed the fights. As always, I have been your host, Kubari Parta. This has been Brawl Masters, and I'll see you next Sunday for some more brawling action. Good night.